Good morning and welcome to another episode of Breakfast by the Bay. I'm Captain Eric. I'm here with Captain Chan behind the camera and Captain Megan up at the helm. And we're on the Elizabeth Morris coming to you from Rose Island, just south of the Newport Bridge. We'll wait for just a minute here to uh, get some folks signed in. And uh, if you can give us a thumbs up if our, if our uh, uh, audio is coming in clear to you. We might have a little bit of engine noise, so just want to make sure that y'all can hear. Alright, well, sounds like everybody can hear. Uh, so again, uh, my name is Captain Eric, and I'm here with Captain Jen and Captain Megan on board Elizabeth Morris. And we're off Rose Island. And Rose Island is one of my favorite places in the Bay. Uh, it's just south of the Newport Bridge, uh, just outside of Newport Harbor. And it's about an 18 acre island. Uh, the most prominent feature of Rose Island is of course its beautiful lighthouse. And although we're not supposed to have favorites. I think it's my favorite lighthouse in the Bay. Uh, the lighthouse was built in 1869 and first lit in 1870, January of 1870. It was one of a number of lighthouses that were built in the Bay right along that uh, uh, time frame. They were built for the Fall River Lines, which ran a passenger and freight service from New York City to Narragansett Bay. Uh, so this was one of the first of the lighthouses built for uh, uh, at their request uh, because right where we are, we are in about 90 feet of water. So it goes from really deep to really dry really quickly. So this lighthouse was a really important way of getting ships safely up the bay. Now, uh, the lighthouse was in service for just over 100 years until 1971. Because in 1969, a really big thing was built right nearby. Can anybody guess what it was? That's right, it was the Newport Bridge, which just celebrated its 50th year. Uh, so it was completed in 1969 and they really quickly realized that they didn't need the little old lighthouse here anymore. So the Coast Guard took the lantern out of the tower, they boarded up the doors and windows, and they walked away from it. Now unfortunately, the doors and windows did not stay boarded up. The place became heavily vandalized, the pigeons moved in, and for about a decade, it was open to the elements with pigeons living inside, which is not good for any kind of structure. So by the early 1980s, the Coast Guard, which still owned the lighthouse and the acre of land that the lighthouse sits on, they desperately wanted to get rid of it. So they offered it to the city of Newport, they offered it to the town of Jamestown on the other side of the West East Passage, and neither of those two wanted to take it on. So the Coast Guard was getting all set and ready to demolish the place when a small group of people got together. And they formed what became known as the Rose Island Lighthouse Foundation. And they convinced the city of Newport that the city would take ownership of the lighthouse and the acre of land it sits on, that they would be able to restore the light and keep it open to the public at no cost to the city taxpayers. Now, believe it or not, they were able to do that. And in August of 1993, they relit the light uh, and it has been open as a living museum ever since. Yeah, Megan, I think we can uh, head around and start coming down to the south side. So, the first floor of the lighthouse is set up just like it would have been in 1912, uh, but the second floor is actually a modern apartment. 
And what they use that for is what they call the Keeper of the Week program. So in order to make sure that there's no more vandalism and that the building stays safe, they always like to have someone out here. So they actually have people who come and spend their vacations out here and live out at the lighthouse for one week at a time. You can actually even stay overnight in the bedrooms that are on the first floor, which is really cool. So the lighthouse is just one part of the history of Rose Island. It really, the history dates back long before the lighthouse. Native Americans, the Narragansetts, used to summer out here because the waters are, uh, have lots and lots of fish and lots of great shell fishing right around it. So it was a nice, safe place uh, right in the middle of the uh, wonderful, cool sea breezes that come up the bay. So it was a great spot for them to summer. Then in 1798, the government began to build a fort out here. You can see one of the walls uh, that would have eventually housed guns up on the hill back there. And then the other wall is actually what the lighthouse is built on. So they filled in that area and they built the lighthouse on top of it. Now the only other structure of the fort that they were able to complete was what we call the barracks building, which is that long low roof line in behind the beach with the chimneys coming out of it. So uh, that uh, fort was never completed, but they did use the structures for a number of things, uh, including the uh, wall underneath the lighthouse, of course. But at one point, the barracks building was used as an emergency quarantine hospital for a cholera epidemic that occurred in the 1820s in Newport. People either came out to Rose Island and got better, or they stayed out on Rose Island. Uh, and uh, then in the 1850s, the United States Navy began to use the building to store explosives. They would take black powder and gun cotton off of the ships that were anchored here in Narragansett Bay, and they stored it safely in the barracks building. Then later in the 1870s, Rose Island became part of the Newport Naval Torpedo Station. So Newport became the home of manufacture and development of naval torpedoes and mines. So most of that work was done over on Goat Island at the entrance to Newport Harbor, but they didn't want to keep the explosives there on Goat Island because they didn't want to have an accident. So once again, the explosives were stored out here on Rose Island. At the height of World War II, there were over one million pounds of TNT being stored out here on Rose Island. They say if there had been an accident and it had been all blown up, it would have broken every window from Newport to Providence. So, pretty cool spot. Now, once the Navy uh, closed the uh, island, it was eventually sold off and it was ended up in the hands of some developers. And their idea was they were gonna put 150 condominiums and a big marina out here. Now, luckily, over the years, Rose Island had turned into a great habitat for nesting, wading birds. Birds like great egret, cattle egret, uh, green heron, even some great blue heron ended up nesting here. So that was one strike against them. The other strike against them was they could never figure out where to park all the cars. So eventually they gave up their ideas and they sold the 17 acres of the island that they owned to the Rose Island Lighthouse Foundation. And part of the money that uh, Rose Island used to buy the property was from the Department of Environmental Management 
and it, that placed what is called a conservation easement on the property, which means no one can ever develop it, which is really cool. So we can officially say that most of Rose Island is for the birds. So one of my absolute favorite spots here in the Bay, it's a great place to visit. We here at uh, Save the Bay, we do a bunch of trips out here during our lighthouse uh, tours, and also a few times a uh, year during our seal watch tours. Uh, you can also come out and visit the island via the Jamestown Newport Ferry from Memorial Day to Labor Day. Uh, and I really recommend coming out and seeing one of the greatest spots of Narragansett Bay. Now, this was our last uh, episode of Breakfast by the Bay for uh, 2021. Uh, so, uh, hope that you've all enjoyed these. You can always find our videos again on uh, uh, our YouTube channel. We'd certainly like to thank our sponsors, 11th Hour Racing, for helping us uh, uh, put all these together. And we hope that uh, you get out and enjoy Narragansett Bay this summer. Bye-bye.